Hello, how's it going? How are you today? Hello. Nice to see you again. I'm doing well. And you? I'm doing well as well. And uh, what's uh, new? Nice I hear. You too. I think I hear your son in the background. Yes, uh, he is my uh, my baby, and he's crying. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, well, that's all right. We're glad to see you. What's uh, how's everything in your your world? What's what's new with you? How's how's everything with you, H? Everything is okay. Good. It has been uh, a long time I uh, didn't join Colingo classes. Mm -hmm. Maybe oh. the last uh, week. Oh, okay. Because I was busy. Busy? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's normal. That happens. No problem. Well, it's good to have you back. And hello. I want to say hello to all of our viewers. It looks like we have about four, four people viewing this class. So welcome to Colingo. You can join us at Colingo.com for free. There's a free trial. If you're interested in trying this for free, just jump to Colingo.com and sign up. It'll be fun. So this is an advanced level class, so it should be a little difficult. We're going to talk about pop culture. In this case, we're going to talk about comedy live comedy. There's this um, a kind of a famous live comedy club in, uh, in Chicago in the United States uh, which is very influential and they uh, they introduced a lot of famous comedians to uh, the world. Um, so it's kind of a place where a lot of famous comedians came from in this place here in Chicago. By the way, I'm teaching today from Wisconsin, uh, which is very far away from where I usually teach. Uh, now I'm right in Wisconsin is closer to Chicago. It's uh, up in the north part of the United States. So that's where I am now. Uh, also today we will be talking about uh, independent and dependent subordinate clauses. So that's interesting. That's something that we don't uh, we don't necessarily spend too much time on. So that's kind of a new grammar skill that we'll look look at. Independent and dependent subordinate clauses. What does that mean? We'll learn. We'll talk all about that later. So it should be good. Let's see if anyone else joins us. In the meantime, uh, I'd like to ask you uh, a question to start off, get us kind of warmed up. Uh, when do you most feel like watching YouTube? Do you like watching YouTube, H? Yes, I like watching uh, YouTube. And I uh, usually to watch YouTube. Mm, okay. Is there a certain time, uh, day that you like to watch it, or any time? In my leisure time. In your leisure time? Yes, I have a WhatsApp program in my phone, and I usually receive uh, many, many videos. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, what kind of videos do you like to watch? Because there's so many different kinds. Different kinds. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I like to watch different kinds. I like to watch music or something funny or something interesting or something educational or uh, anything. Movies, videos. It can be all different things. 
So it can be a, it's a good, it can be a good way to pass the time. Yeah. Ooh, we have five viewers now. So, uh, yeah, I uh, sometimes I I don't always sit and just watch YouTube, but sometimes I do, and when I do in my leisure time as well, maybe uh, maybe at night when I'm fin finished with my work or something, I might watch a couple things on YouTube. I keep a playlist of uh, sometimes I, if I want to remember. Uh, my very favorite things. I keep them on a playlist, and uh, that way I can watch them again later in the future. So, hello, Ken. Yes, hello. How are you? Good. How are you today? Yes, I'm fine. Yes. So, how was your how was your day? How's everything in Fukuoka? Oh, same old, same old. It's cold. Kind of ordinary, you know, uh, winter day. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and I watched a, a documentary of uh, journey, journey, New Journey. Journey, yeah. Yeah. Filipino yeah. journey. Yes, yes. So uh, it was interesting documentary. You know how Star was made and how the ordinary with life changes because of the such fame and the tour touring ah. kind of thing, yeah. Oh, so it talks more about the lead singer. Their yeah, uh, the yeah mainly he, it describes uh, you know main singers, uh, you know focus on the main singers, you know what happened to main singer and journey itself because after that their their tour you know, was sold out a lot. Mm. So they two will succeed very uh, tremendously. Mm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, kind of he vitalized the journey. Mm. Yes. Uh, but yeah. uh, at the same time, he faced a huge, you know, stress or pressure. Yeah. Because all of a sudden he have to play in front of two thousand, uh, twenty thousand people. Yeah. That's wow. crazy. <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. That's an interesting story. You know, I taught a class about New Journey a few weeks ago. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, maybe early in the morning, so I couldn't join that. <laughs> it was probably too late. I was talking about um, uh, them raising a bunch of money for the Philippines. Mm -hmm. It was more about uh, uh, their fundraising or or, or get, donating a lot of money to the Philippines mm -hmm. for their uh, disaster. Oh, so yeah. I talked to a class about Journey. Yeah. Reed Singer, you know, he, he suffered, you know, uh, you know, after his mother passed away, and he, the the the, the family uh, had a huge debt for the, maybe without health insurance, he, I, I'm not sure the exact mm -hmm. but he they couldn't pay the you know, fee for the hospital, so he became a street, uh, street children after that. Uh -huh. and he remembered, uh, you know, uh, even before that, he living in an area of fraud often happened. So fraud is uh, was there his uh, ordinary life kind of daily kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So yeah, maybe he you know, he pretty much know what happened there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Interesting. So. So today we have a pop culture class. Uh, I was warming up by asking everyone about uh, their YouTube watching habits, mm -hmm. and I was wondering uh, when do you when do you most feel like watching YouTube? Do you like to watch YouTube? Mm, kind of uh, for killing my time. Yeah, <laughs> mostly. <laughs> and yeah. And uh, and and YouTube is also a good archive too. I can find old something easily on YouTube as long as the latest uh, buzz. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's a huge archive of everything. You can find anything on there. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, it's that's the first place I go when I'm looking for. 
I don't know, like any kind of video, any kind of music, any kind of... It's got everything, so... Mm. You don't have to worry. But yeah, I don't... I don't know, watch too much of it, but uh, sometimes I'm in the mood to just sit and watch stuff mm. after work. Or yeah. So this class I was telling H about, uh, this is... Uh, Pop culture class, advanced pop culture class. We're going to talk about comedy today. We're going to talk about uh, one of the most famous comedy clubs in America uh, and uh, kind of their influence on the comedy world. And and uh, so we get to learn about some of the great comedians who came from this came from this uh, comedy club in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Chicago is kind of close to where I, I am right now. Chicago is just south of Wisconsin. So that's kind of my my neck of the woods. That's our class today. Uh, Susu, how are you doing? Hello, I'm good. What's new with you? I haven't seen you in a few days. Well, nothing new. Same old. Mm -hmm. Yeah? Nothing new at all? What what'd you do today? Nothing special. Nothing special. Mm -hmm. uh, we were just talking about... Uh, I was asking people about YouTube. Uh, when do you most feel like watching YouTube? So, so. All the time. All the time. So you're a <laughs> YouTube junkie? You like to watch yes. YouTube all the time? I even during classes. <laughs> even during classes? Wow, uh, you're addicted to YouTube. I see. I see. Uh, all right. Just wondering. I like to see, compare how people watch. I know a lot of people watch it for different reasons, but how they watch it, their YouTube watching habits. But we all watch it. So our grammar skill today. This is a new one. I don't think I've taught this one before. We're going to talk about independent independent subordinate clauses. That sounds, sounds difficult, but I don't think it's too hard. So we'll take a look at uh, some of the ideas here. So what is an independent clause when we're talking about English grammar? What is an independent clause? It is a sentence uh, that can stand by itself. Okay, good. Good. So it's like a yeah, exactly. It's a it's a phrase or a sentence, piece of a sentence maybe that can stand without anything else. Uh, something very short. It could be a piece of a sentence like uh, I watched YouTube. It could be just something really short. That's an independent clause. Or, or uh, he went to the comedy club. Something very small, which could. T it could be expanded to a bigger sentence, but you could also just keep it into one small, small phrase. Right, so that's independent clause. Uh, so we're going to learn about that, and we're going to learn about dependent clauses. I'm going to share with you uh, this uh, lesson. Can you guys see the screen? Yes. Okay, good. Uh, okay, so. So we talked about what are independent clauses. What about a dependent clause? Let me see if I can make this a little bigger. What about a dependent clause? Oops. Cannot stand by itself. Yes. Yeah, so. Uh, yeah, Ken, why don't you read? Read about dependent clause. Okay. Uh, second, a dependent clause contains a subject and verb, uh, but it does not show a complete the thought. It cannot be sentence. Uh, cannot be a sentence. Usually, you will see a dependent market uh, marker would in the clause. Uh, once she finishes dinner, when's the ma uh, marker? Uh, this is a uh, Com incomplete because we do not know what happens after she finishes dinner. 
uh, if he would have met her in the in the park, it is uh, the marker. This is incomplete because we do not know what would have happened if they met in the park. There are common marker words and expressions, as as if after when other because even if even <laughs> thou if in order to since whether thou unless which until whatever before whenever and while. That's a lot of different marker words. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, we use if we use one of these kind of words, it kind of means it's kind of continuing. It means uh, it kind of leaves it open. It's a dependent clause. It contains a subject and a verb, but does not show a complete thought. It can kind of it leaves it open ended. All right, good. Uh, third. Uh, H, will you read this for us? Okay. You will use the independent clause with a dependent clause to make a complete sentence. The independent clause clauses in the examples are underlined. She always drives Timmy to work when his car is broken down. Because she went, he left the play early and drove himself home. Okay, yeah. So the underlying clause can stand alone as a sentence. These can be independent clauses, and they're tied to a dependent clause, and that makes a complete sentence. So this could be a complete sentence, the underlying part, but uh, it doesn't have to be. Right. Very good. Uh, now what about independent marker words and coordinating conjunctions? Let's learn about that. Sosa? Uh, OK. Uh, fourth, independent marker words and coordinating conjunctions can both be used to connect to independent Clauses. Independent marker words are used at the beginning of an independent clause and can begin a sentence that does not need a dependent clause. If the second independent clause in a sentence has an independent marker word, you must use a semicolon before the marker word. For example, even though she did not trust him, they met at the bank. Uh, consequently, she she lo loaned him the money. Mm -hmm. John loved Grace more than anyone he had ever loved before. However, he knew that they needed to break up. Mm -hmm. Common independent markers are, however, con consequently also furthermore, moreover, nevertheless, and therefore. All right. So this gets pretty complex. Uh, yes. Now, really. You could technically uh, separate this a little differently. You could technically go, this could actually just be a sentence right here. Even though she did not trust him, they met at the bank. This could almost be its own sentence, too. Consequently, she loaned him the money, like an independent clause. So I guess you, but this is one way to do it. If you do it like this, you need the uh, semicolon. We don't, we don't talk about the semicolon very much in this class, but that it is a punctuation mark that we use occasionally. Uh, what about coordinating conjunctions? Uh, Ken? Okay. Uh, coordinate, coordinating conjunctions are used as uh, at the beginning of an ind independent clause, a uh, comma is needed before the coordinating conjunction in cases where the second independent clause begins with a coordinating conjunction. She knew that she had to be there uh, at 8 or 
miss the party, uh, miss the play, but she was late again. Uh, Timmy loves to live in many different countries, yet he only speaks English. There are seven coordination, uh, coordinating conjunctions, and, but, for, or, nor, so, and yet. It is common for writers to leave our uh, uh, leave out the comma in sentences. John has a nice car, but he does not like to drive. Uh huh. Yeah, that sometimes happens. So coordinated conjunctions. So this again, this could be a, a sentence right there. She knew that she had to be there at eight or miss the play. That could be a sentence. Or you could add on a little bit at the end. But she was late again. That's an that's a dependent. Pause. Uh, so lots of different ways to do this. Okay, let's let's be careful of common errors. This is I want to spend a little bit of time on this because I haven't taught this yet. So I want to go through this whole lesson before we move on to our topic. So Homud H, will you read uh, this fifth one, please? H, are you still there? Oh, okay, is it too much, too much baby noise? No problem. Thank you for, uh, thank you for uh, uh, letting us know because it could be distracting to have too much noise. Uh, we'll have uh, Susu. You can go ahead and read that one then. Okay. Okay. Two, uh, two common errors besides sentence fragments are comma, simplicis, and fused sentences. A comma, simplicis, is it right? Supplies, okay. Yep. A comma, supplies is when you use a comma between two independent clauses. Incorrect. Ariel likes speaking English. It is a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, Ariel like, uh, should I read it? Because all the same. Uh, yeah, actually, well, let's look. Let's look at. Let's look at here. Um, okay, so this. <coughs> I really like speaking English. Comma, it is a lot of fun. Those are two independent clauses. Um, so what we have here, uh, you could say, I really like speaking English. Comma, and it is a lot of fun. Uh, I really like speaking English. Uh, com, uh, uh, semicolon. It is a lot of fun. That would work. I really like speaking English because it's a lot of fun with no comma. That could work. Or you could switch it around. Because it's a lot of fun, comma, I really like speaking English. So when you switch the clauses, uh, we start with the connector word here. Or uh, should we call it the uh, conjunction? Is that a conjunction? Or it's a... Uh, marker word, I guess. Uh, you, uh, if you start with this marker, then you need a comma in between the clauses, but only when you start. So this is getting really technical as to the rules of grammar. Now, I mean, this is so technical that I don't even know if most Americans would really know these rules. I think a lot of Americans would just write this and not really care. So we're getting very technical here. But it is good to know the rules. If you want to have proper writings, writing skills, if you want to learn proper writing, proper grammar, it is good to learn the rules. Okay. Uh, and now another, another little issue here could be fused sentence, which is not separated. Let's take a look. At, let's just go over that quick. Uh, Ken, will you read through that? Okay. Uh, when you have a fused sentence, it is due to two independent causes, clauses that are not separated by any uh, punctuation. This is also known as a run-on sentence. Incorrect. Jenny is always uh, dis uh, disruptive. 
I do not like her. Jenny is always disruptive. I do not like her. Jenny is always disruptive. I do not like her. And Jenny is always disruptive. Therefore, I do not like her. Mm -hmm. Jenny is always disruptive. And I not I do not like her. Okay, lots of different versions here. This one's definitely wrong. Uh, it's confused. It's like it doesn't make sense. This one makes a lot. This one really is hard to read because there's no, there's no break. You need a break because if you were to say this, you you would put a break. Jenny's always disruptive. I don't like her. You should have a pause. Not Jenny's always disruptive. I don't like her. Doesn't make sense. So you need a pause here. How do you indicate the pause? You could have a full stop. These could be two independent clauses. These are two independent clauses, so this is totally okay. You could, uh, this is kind of a full stop for two independent clauses. Can make a full sentence too if you want. It's your choice. It could be a semicolon. That's a semicolon there. It's very small, but that's what that is. You could add a conjunction there, therefore, or an and, something like that. Lots of different ways to do it correctly, and each one of these indicates a pause between the two clauses. All right. So, uh, so that's uh, that is our lesson, grammar lesson. I want to. I spent a lot more time than usual on grammar. Usually in advanced classes, uh, I spend only a few minutes, but for this one, I wanted to go through the whole thing because it was new. Uh, I have not taught this one yet because I, so I want to go through the whole thing with you. So thank you for your patience, uh, and I hope you understood. Do you have any questions about these clauses, independent clauses? Anything like that? Okay, so I have no questions. Uh, let's. Talk about Second City, this comedy school, comedy club in Chicago. Let me share this article with you. I'll have a blue Christmas without you. All right, so Second City. This is the uh, history of Second City, this comedy club in Chicago. And then we'll talk about some of its influence. The Second City opened its doors on a snowy Chicago night in December of 1959. I'm going to share this with you. No one could have guessed that this small cabaret theater would become the most influential and prolific comedy theater in the world. Influential and prolific. Welcome, Sean. Hey, hey, Tony. Hey, how are you? Good. How are you doing? Good, good, good. Uh, Thank you. You know what? Uh, since this is an advanced class, mm -hmm. um, I remembered that, uh, you know, technically I'm supposed to have you guys read these articles. So why don't you guys read? Uh, work on your reading skills. This is going to be an advanced class, so why don't I have you read? Uh, let's start from right to left. So let's start with Susu, uh, with the second paragraph. And uh, please let me know if you have any questions about pronunciation or vocabulary. So let's start with the second paragraph, Susu. Okay. It's roots and the emperor. Improvisational. Okay, improvisational games of viola, spoiling. The second city developed an entirely unique way of creating and performing comedy, founded by Spolin's Spolin's sons, Bob Sells, along with Howard Alec and Bernie Sahilans. The second city was experimental and unconfidential and it is approach to both to both theater and comedy. At a time when modern law jokes were more than fashion, the second city railed railed against them 
conformance culture with senses that spoke to younger generation. All right, good. So, uh, yeah, this is an advanced class, so we get to learn. This is uh, pretty big words here. Uh, experimental and unconventional in its approach to both theater and comedy. So it's something new, something different. Uh, rallied against conformist culture. So they're just being, they're trying to be different and progressive and new. And something more fresh, a new kind of style of comedy. That's what they're talking about here. I know it looks a little bit confusing, but they're just saying that it's new and fresh style. Good. Uh, Sean, will you continue? Okay. Uh, the Broadway success of Mike Nichols and uh, Annan May, members of the Second City's predecessor. The campus players put attention on the fledgling company. S so, an, a new an anomaly, right? Anomaly of the Second City, such as yeah. Alan Ar Arkin. Barbara alumni. I'd say alumni. Alumni. Yep. Okay. Uh, such as Alan Arkin, uh, Barbara Harris, Robert Klein, David Steinberg, and Fred Weiner began to cement the theater's reputation for developing the finest comedic voices of each and every generation with the debut of NBC's Saturday Night Live populated by Second City, Alan's John Berlusi, Dan Acroyd, and uh, Gilda Radner. Mm -hmm. The theater became internationally known for its ever-increasing roster of comedy superstars. Comedy superstars. A lot of... Uh, comedy. Yeah, a lot of... Uh, yeah, a lot of uh, Names here. We had a lot of names, yeah. Uh, so that's, that's kind of difficult. But uh, these are some really famous comedians and actors. Uh -huh. uh, Saturday Night Live is the most famous live comedy show on TV in the United States, and these guys are some examples of some of the people that moved from Second City to Saturday Night Live. Uh, any questions about some of the vocabulary or anything so far? What does roster mean? Roster. Roster. Roster is a. Uh, it's like uh, a good question. It's like a list, a uh, list of, uh, of a people. Of the people. Uh, a list of people. So so like, if you talk about baseball. Uh -huh. Who's on the roster for this baseball team? And it's a list oh, of all okay. the players. Uh, so it's a list of all the com comedians, of the great comedians in the, in the United States. In okay. The roster. Good. Uh, hello, Noor. Yeah, hi, teacher. How are you? Uh, good. How are you today? I'm fine. Doing great. Thanks. Uh, will you read the next paragraph, please? Uh, sure. Sure. Okay. Um, soon, Second City Sisters Theater in Canada developed its own sketch, sketch, sketch comedy series. Uh, SCTV held as as one of the greatest comedy series of all time, and featuring an all star cast, and in, that included Martin Short, uh, Andrea. Martin and Catherine O'Hara, mm -hmm. Joan Kennedy, um, again Levy, Eugene, Levy, yeah. Eugene Levy, Dave uh, Thomas, John uh, Flaherty, mm -hmm. and Rick Morness. Yeah, Morness. A lot of lit names. It's kind of hard to read it when they're all names like this, but. <coughs> These are uh, more really, really famous people that ended up being in... So a lot of these people ended up being in famous movies, comedy movies, and TV 
these shows, and uh, you would recognize some of these people if you saw their faces. There were some very famous people. <coughs> very famous. Uh, good. Uh, good. So this is a Canadian sister theater. So they opened up a second theater, that's what they're saying, in Canada. And it had a TV show. So it was live. The other one was like a stage. This one's like a TV show. Okay. Uh, good. Hey, H, how's the sound in the background? Can you read with us, please? Is that a, Are you able to or not? <coughs> Or is it still noisy? So, H, are you still there? Or are you busy? Oh, OK. We will uh, continue then. Uh, Ken, uh, by the 1980s? Uh, by the 1980s, the second city had become much more than a small ca cabaret, uh, cabaret theater on Chicago's north side. In the middle of the decade, uh, the second city would begin a new era at Second City Toronto. Uh, pro uh, proprietors Andrew Alexander and Ren Stewart would buy out Barney uh, Sharlin's interest in the Second City Chicago and set in motion a new era of innovation for the company. Mm -hmm. Good. All right. Uh, good. And finally, the paragraph. What about how about today? What is going on in the Second City, Susan? Okay. Today, the Second City continues to produce the premier comic talent in the industry. Uh, the premier comic talent in the industry, from Mike Myers to Steve Carell, Stephen Colbert to Tina Fey. The Second City imprint is felt across every entertainment medium. Additionally, the Second City has grown well beyond a second, a single stage to become a diversified entertainment company. Second City Training Centers in Chicago, Toronto, and Los Angeles teach thousands of students every week. Four touring companies perform Second City refu refuse, refuse all over North America and abroad. Second City communic communic Communications has become an industry leader in bringing growth-based methodologies to the corporate sector. And Second City continues to create unique media and television film and the digital realm. 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 Yeah, the digital, it's like a realm is like a, a world or a, a sector. The digital digital uh, world. Uh, look at they even use. They have some semicolons in here. They have some pretty long sentences using semicolons, which lots of semicolons. <laughs> so, how does this work? This one sentence. That's a that's a long sentence. So this first part could be a sentence. The second part could be a sentence. That's a long, this is one sentence connected by many semicolons and commas. So that's a lot of words that's strung together into one sentence. Any questions about the last couple of paragraphs, uh, vocabulary or meaning? Anyone? <coughs> so, here's a couple of facts about Second City. They uh, entertain over a million guests every year. <coughs> uh, it's a training ground for famous alumni. Alumni is um, people who used to work there, people who used to study there and perform there. 
<coughs> these are <coughs> some famous, very famous people. You've probably heard of some of them. John Belushi, Mike Myers, Bill Murray, Gilda Radner, John Candy, Catherine O'Hara, Tina Fey, Steve Carell, Stephen Colbert, and over 500 more. Won many awards. Uh, produced 185 episodes of SCTV. They give a lot of money to charitable donations. Lots of good stuff. So, uh, let's see if we can take a look at uh, what it's like uh, to watch Second City. Uh, Somewhere there is a. Somewhere there is a. Somewhere there's some videos, but I don't know where I, I. Oh, here they are. So, you can like. Go back in time. And try to find a video maybe. Hmm. Uh, just gonna want to see a production. There was one about. Uh, hmm. All right. Steve Carell, Rachel Dratch. I just want to look at a sketch. So they do sketch comedy. Uh, let's check out. Uh, Hello, welcome to the Art Institute of Chicago. Would you like to take the audio tour? Yes, please. Okay, great. Five bucks. All right. Hey. Anything on this again? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Art tour. Okay. Here you go. You just take these here. Put them on your head. Stand on a red X. Press play. And then, uh, uh, yeah, I've been on an audio tour before. Oh, good. I had to talk to an asshole before. <laughs> Hello, and welcome to the Art Institute of Chicago Audio Tour. I'm your guy. My name is Tony Mendoza. Welcome to you, I'm Frank Art. The uh, audio is probably not good enough for you to understand, so I'll stop here. But you can watch some of the videos on your own computer uh, uh, later. So it's not, it's not, you're not probably able to hear the to hear the audio. It's not good quality. So you'll have to check it out on your own computer to see some of their uh, sketch comedy. It's called sketch comedy, which they used. Uh, so it's done live. It's improvised sometimes, so there's no script. It's not written out, and this is kind of the uh, this is kind of like the, the the style that influenced these shows, like uh, Saturday Night Live, which is very popular in the United States and brings about some of the biggest comedy stars uh, and uh, in the world. So very influential, and that's the style of sketch comedy. It's done live and simple, uh, but plus just uh, comedy. So, uh, when did Second City open? How uh, how long has it been around, this place, this uh, institution? You guys remember? 1959. Yeah, 1959. That's... Uh, that's a long time. That's more than 50 years. So, uh, so they have quite a quite a stronghold on the in industry. 
So who are some of the famous stars who came from Second City? Do you recognize some of their names? Tina Fey. Tina Fey. Yeah, have Tina. you seen them? Mm -hmm. Have you seen and some movies? With yeah, yeah, yeah. Tina Fey and Amy and her Amy Poehler. Amy Poehler. Yeah. Okay, yeah, they were both in Second City and both in Saturday Night Live, two of the most famous actresses from Saturday Night Live and Second City. Mike Myers. Mike Myers. Where did, Brothers. Where, did, where did Mike Myers become famous for? Uh, Austin Powers yeah, and... Uh, yeah. Wayne's World. Wayne's World. Which actually, Wayne's World came from a sketch comedy. Mm -hmm. Wayne came yeah. uh, from a sketch from Saturday Night Live. It was a little tiny little skit mm -hmm. that they did. Uh, and they made a whole movie out of it. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it became very popular. Yep. Yep. So, very influential. You see the, the influence on the comedy realm, the comedy world. It's an important institution. <coughs> so how did Second City get so popular, exactly? How did we read through this, but uh, what made it, what do you think made it so, so popular? It was a traditional comedy. Oh, I heard two people at once. Uh, Noor, did you say something? I said maybe because they are presenting their comedy in a spontaneous way, so people like it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the style was new and different. It was more spontaneous. It was kind of maybe exciting because it was, yeah, spontaneous. Okay, and maybe word word got around. Susu, what were you saying? I was saying that uh, it wasn't traditional. They even uh, changed the jokes. It wasn't the old ones. Mm hmm Yeah, it wasn't boring traditional jokes. They were trying to do something edgy. Uh, ever hear that word? So if something is edgy, then uh, it's progressive uh, or uh, bold, new. So it's like something that's like edgy. It's like, oh, I don't know. That's... People might not even like this. This is pretty different, pretty new, pretty modern. It's kind of edgy. Uh, that's edgy comedy. So it's like some people are like, oh, like traditionalists. I'd be like, uh, I like old-fashioned jokes. I don't like these new kind of jokes. So the edgy, edgy comedy might make some people angry if it's edgy, very new, forward-thinking. Has anyone here ever seen a live comedy show before? Have you ever gone to a comedy club? Another country? That's something you've ever seen? It's the new, um, I think, new um, ideas coming here in Saudi Arabia. Uh, Stand-up comedy, real. But I never watched it before and real, but I get a chance to watch it in YouTube. It was so fun. It's a new way for people who love comedy in Saudi Arabia. Okay, so it's starting to become popular in your country. Yeah, so popular, stand-up comedy. Really? That's yeah. A, interesting. Wow, that's cool. So it's like a new a new art form that's starting in your country. That's very interesting. I didn't know that. So they have some in your city that you could, you could potentially you could go see? Yeah, yeah actually there is. Uh, Jidda Comedy Club, I think the name exactly. I'm not sure. But a lot of young guys like it so much and they attend this kind of clubs. Huh. Can we go? I don't know. Um, yeah, I think so. There is for women too. I think so. They can I don't think it. so. <laughs> I'm not sure. I told you. Mm. Mm. Yeah, well, maybe. Maybe they have a special knife. Uh, yeah, I don't know how it works there. A different culture. Yeah. So, uh, anyone else? Uh, uh, I used to work uh, like a security guard of the 
comedy show or festival. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah kind of. Uh, actually, before the stage or after the stage, they are not so funny, <laughs> in my impression. Uh, they are serious, especially before the stage, they uh, are a bit nervous. Because, but uh, right after they appear the stage, they they completely change to comedian. Oh, really? Yeah, in a loud voice and very bad uh -huh. facial expression, complete changes. Uh huh. That's the kind of <laughs> yeah. That was, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I briefly uh, was in an elevator, and uh, that comedy duo uh, released a lot of comedy songs. Elevator. I, elevator, yeah. And I just asked, uh, how many songs are you are you writing in a year or something? He said one hundred so he one hundred songs. Wow. Maybe he, after that he. Cho chose what is a proper song of for re releasing. Yeah. Uh, maybe before behind the stage they they are making a lot of effort. I get, I think so. Yeah. Yeah, good comedy takes a lot of work, a lot of preparation. Even even improv, right? What is improv? That's an important word that we. What does that mean when you talk about improv comedy? What does that mean? Improv. Improvisation. Okay. What is improv? Kind of spontaneous reaction, not on the script. Yeah. Right. Okay, good. Spontaneous, unscripted. So uh, the opposite of improv would be something that's totally written, and they have to memorize it. Uh, there's something kind of funny and um, uh, exciting about something that's being made up on the spot. They're like, they're like, okay, here's the deal. Uh, here's the story. Here's the scenario. Okay, go. And then you just have to pre just have to act it out uh, all fresh. That's improv comedy. Um, sometimes a sketch comedy would be somewhere in between. We're like, let's do a basic idea, and then they just kind of make up the the details. Uh, so there's lots of different kinds of improv. Uh, improv comedy is very popular in the United States right now. You can go to improv comedy clubs in all the cities in the United States. So that might be. That might have become popular because of Second City. That might have spearheaded the whole thing. So that's a big part of our culture. Some people really enjoy it. Now, I, I can say I, there's nothing worse than a bad comedy show. <laughs> I hate bad comedies. Oh, I hate sitting through something that's not funny. So if I know it's going to be good, maybe I would check it out. But uh, I do love good comedy, but it's hard to come by. I'm very picky when it comes to comedy. So... That's our class on Second City Comedy Club and their whole institution, their teaching, and they do all sorts of different things. Uh, good. I have four more classes today. My next one is a travel class. We're going to go to Istanbul. Uh, after that, we're going to have a culture and food, food class. And we're going to talk about the food and tea in the country of Mauritania. Uh, then I have uh, a, a culture and history class about the ancient Greeks. That might be a that might be a beginner class. And finally, I have a games class at the end of the day. So lots of fun things ahead. And maybe I'll see you at one of those classes. If not, have a great night. Good job today. Thanks for reading and uh, good work. Thank you, teacher. Thank you very much. See you. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Take care.